So this morning, please bear with me. I am going to uh, preach and teach about the Word of God. And it will be a word that uh, uh, normally people, when they always hear something in their life, it becomes common. And the sad thing is this, that even the Word of God is becoming common when they always hear it and not obey it. So, as a, as a man, as a people of God, is there really a change in our life when we meet God one time in our life? So this uh, morning I'm going to teach about 2 Corinthians 5.17, particularly in that verse. So please stand, please. Uh, let us all stand up. Let us read our text this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 21 or 21. Verses 14 to 21. I will read verse 14 and you read verse 15. Okay. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know him no more. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to him by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us uh, the ministry of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God died beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. All together? For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Lord, once again, we thank you and appreciate what you are doing in our life. And Lord, this morning, we just continue to ask for your guidance as we study your word. Please be the one to be exalted in our life. Please be the one to be praised, O oh God, in all of these things that we are going to do. Please bless thy people, edify thy people through thy word. And Lord, please help me, God, because without you I cannot do anything. Anoint me, anoint my lips, use me for thy glory alone, O oh God, that the name of Christ will be lifted up in our lives, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Madugo itong dumaga na ito. Nosebleed ka. Okay. Amen. So uh, I will be preaching this morning particularly in verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, uh, and also uh, we, I'll give you some, some points about this. How to, be, how to be in Christ. Is there really a change when we meet God in our life? Is there, really a, is there really a new nature in us when we really know Christ? And why people are not being changed when they don't have Christ in their life? So this morning we are going to uh, study this. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things are become new. I have written, I have posted in my Facebook, and I posted this. Out of 2 Corinthians 5.17, I, I, I wrote this. It says here, It will be more difficult for a true convert not to have a changed life than to stay the same before, like before the conversion. It will be very difficult for a true believer, for a true convert, not to have a changed life when he meets God in his life. Let me give you a very simple uh, illustration. Do you think if I, will be, uh, if I will be given a chance, do you think? If I will be given a chance to go to the sun, 
and I will not get burned. Would you believe that I will not be that I will not get burned? What do you think? If I go to the sun, do you think I will not get burned? Come on. But of course. Baka nga, maybe I'm not even there, there yet. I'm already burned. Do you know if, uh, uh, if we are going to travel from Earth to the Sun and using a, a modern jetliner in a speed of 550, 550 kilometer, uh, miles per hour, it will take for that jet plane 19 years to get into the Sun or in the surface of the Sun. But if you are going to uh, as, as we stay here on earth, we feel the, the heat of the sun, right? And before the heat of the sun reaches earth, it will take eight minutes for that heat to reach earth. That's why the heat that you have felt, that was eight minutes ago. That's how hot the sun is. And if I will go to the sun, I will get burned. Maybe you will not even see even a single hair of me. Yeah, I will disintegrate. I will vanish away. I will be pulverized if I will go to the sun. And if the sun can do that to me, how much more can God do to you? If we think that sun is a powerful thing that can burn, that can do what's the work of the sun, how much more when we meet God in our life? Do you think we will not get changed when we meet God in our life? It will be more impossible for us to be not to be changed when we meet God in our life. Amen. In Proverbs 6:27 and 28 before I go to my main topic, Proverbs 6:27 and 28 Although this is not what uh, it's just here, can a man take a fire in his bosom? It's about temptation. And his clothes not be burned. Do you think if you will put a burning coal on your, on your clothes, you will not get burned? Of course it will burn. That's what the coal is. In 28, can, can one go upon the hot coals and his feet not be burned? Who wants to do that? That you will, you will put a lot of coals here and you step on it and you will not get burned. It is impossible for us not to be burned. And it is also impossible for us that when we meet God, there will be no change. Okay, let me just give you some introduction first. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says here, Therefore, what is, the, the, the word therefore here refers to, seven, to verse 14 and 16. That it, that it talks about that we already died in Christ. In verse 14 it says, For the love of God constraineth us. In the meaning I forgot in, uh, in Hebrew, but it says, the love of God arrested us and we are now prisoners of the love of God, of the love of Christ. That's who we are before God as a new creature. For the love of God constrained us because we thus judge that if, any, if, one died, or if one died for all, then we are all dead. Christ died for us. And to those who believe on him, they already died on themselves. And verse 15, And that, we, that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. They, this is very clear. They should not live for themselves anymore, but unto him, unto Christ, which died for them and rose again. It says here, we should no longer live for ourselves. We should live now for the Lord. We should live for Christ. Verse uh, 16. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. What does it mean? Now, our knowledge about Christ, it is not about this flesh anymore. We are now a new creature. We are now a new being. So, our vision our life now as we look Christ not on the same before like us carnal before like us unsaved before but now we are saved that's how we look Christ now and in 2nd Corinthians 5 7 it says therefore if anyone being Christ is a new creature the 
old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. It says here, we died with Christ and no longer live for ourselves. But sometimes, you know what? This is what the Word of God says. It is very, 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 very clear that we no longer live for ourselves now. But the problem is this. If you are going to weigh yourselves now from a big scale, your, your life in Christ and your life now that you are living now, sometimes it will be your life now, yourselves now will be heavier than living in Christ. I am not trying to condemn you, but I just want you to see the very meaning of the word of God. That when we are in Christ, we no longer live for ourselves. Yet, I always say this, yet we commit sin, but we don't do sin. Yet, we commit mistakes, but we don't do mistakes. Why? Because now we are dead on that, and we are now a new creature. That's who we are. For our lives are no longer worldly. What is worldly? Living, a Christian living in the world. Living not for God, although they said they are already Christian. They are already saved. If you are saved, you will not, you will not enjoy the world. Because the world is the enemy of God. And if we are in God, we, the world also will be our enemy. And we will not enjoy the world anymore. We are, a new, we are new spiritually. That's who we are. We are now a new creature. Our old Adamic nature was nailed on the cross with Christ. In Galatia chapter 2 verse 20. In Galatia 2.20, but don't please. <clears throat> I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Let us dissect this for a while. Verse 20, let us try to dissect this. It says, I am crucified with Christ. We already died with Christ. That is the truth of the word of God. We are not going to water down the word of God. We will, say, we, will, we will study it. We are going to apply it in our life as it is. Okay? We will never reach a sinless perfection. And you know that I always say that we are not perfect. Okay? We are not perfect. But look at the word of God. It says here, I am crucified with Christ. What does it mean? We already died with Christ. But just look at this. Nevertheless, I live, but I still live. Although I already died on the cross, I still live. We still live. But look at what do we live for? Yet not I. Although I live, but it is no longer me. That's what the word of God says. It is no longer me. But, I, but Christ liveth in me. If I'm not living for my own now, Christ is the one now living in me. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. And the life which now I live in the flesh. We are still in the flesh, right? We still commit mistakes. We are still in the flesh. You know that. Uh, the life which I, uh, the, the, uh, now I live, the, uh, where's that? And the life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. If I am living now, I am living by faith. For without, for without faith, faith, it is impossible to please God. And anything that is not of faith is sin. Right? That is what the word of God says. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you still remember what the pastor Joel preached about? That life is unfair? That life is unfair? But you know what? We are the one that's so unfair to God. We are so unfair to God. He gave himself. We never gave ourselves to him. And we don't live in faith by the Son of God. And the Word of God says, nevertheless, I live. We are not living anymore, but we are, should be living for Christ. Brother Alex, are you perfect? No, I'm not. But that is what the Word of God says. I can never change, this and change that and no one can change it. That is the Word of God. That is the Word of God. That's why if someone, you say, sometimes we are being so emotional when someone are being corrected, someone are being... Uh, being uh, rebuked. Kapatid, huwag niyong ikano yun. 
If you know they are directly disobeying God, so be it. You know why? Because this is the Word of God. We never water down the Word of God. We live by the Word of God. We are not perfect, but we were given the chance. Why? In what chance? By the love of God. By the love of God. It says here, my, uh, it says here therefore, if any man be in Christ, I will give you four things this morning, a, a life to be in Christ. By the way, the title is, I am in Christ. The title is, actually, there is a, a question mark. I am in Christ. Okay. Okay, here. To be in Christ means it requires fruit. It requires result in our life. So we can never, we can never say or we can, we can never deny that fact. Kung sinasabi natin, if we are saying that Christ is in us, there should be fruit. There should be result. I remember, I just, we just gave you a testimony. When I came to know the Lord, when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, what I, what I know that time, that I believe on the Lord, I repented of my sin, and gave my life to God. But you know what, what happened to me? The, thing, the first thing that I have known, that I have noticed that, that I really sin in my life, is that the Word of God became alive. For any reason why, I don't know why, after I accepting Christ, the Word of God became, every Word of God that I hear, they are alive and it's like they're piercing in my heart. That's what I have noticed. I don't know when you, Christ, when you accepted the Lord. I don't know what happened to you, but that's what happened to me. It's a, because to be in Christ, there will be a requirement of being changed. Or actually, it's not a requirement. It is the result of being in the Lord. Let me give you my point number one. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4. It says, therefore, we are buried with him by the baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised upon the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. My point number one is this. To be in Christ means we are walking now in a newness of life. That there is change in us. If we are saying that we are now in the Lord or we have now accepted the Lord in our life, there is a new walk in us. It is not like before. There is a, it's not, there is a total change. I'm not saying with our, uh, to, uh, with our flesh, but there is a change in us that now we can walk in newness of life. It means to say there is, it simply means that there is a new man and there is a new woman in you. And that old man was already crucified with Christ. And now we are now living for the Lord. In Romans 7, 6. It says, but now we are delivered from the law. We are not under the law anymore. That being dead were in, we were held. That we should serve in newness of spirit. And not in the oldness of the letter. What's that? We are no longer living by the law. We are no longer under the law. We are now living a new life in Christ. We have now the Holy Spirit in our life. If we accept the Lord Jesus Christ and there is no walking in the newness of life, you have to ask yourself. Or maybe you are thinking about this. You are here. You are attending, you are listening to the word of God and saying that, why? I believe I accepted the Lord. I believe I pray a prayer, but I cannot do what they do. Maybe there is now a true conversion. This is what the easy believism did to the people who go to the church. They bring confusion. They are like, but they are not really the same. In our life, if you are already in the Lord, there will be a new life in you. And we are going to walk on that new life. We are not all perfect. We know that we are not all perfect. We still commit sin. But the Bible says there will be a difference between 
an unbeliever and a believer of the Lord. Those believers of the Lord, they love God. They love the word of God. They walk in, in the path where God wants them to walk. Though we are weak. Though we cannot do that by our own. That's why the one who lives in us is Christ and we need his strength to continue on. We cannot do that with our own. We are now living the life that is not for this world anymore. And that is the new, new thing in our life. Maybe you are confused why? Why am I not? I cannot do what they do. You can never imitate what God is doing to a person. You can never do that. You can never imitate what God did to a person because what they have is a unique power and that is the power of God. If you are truly saved, there will be change. It will be more difficult not to change if you have Christ in your life. My point number two, to be in Christ means in Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. In number one, we now walk in the newness of life. Now in Colossians chapter 3 verse 9, we are like the switch of the, the, like the, the light. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 9, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old with his deeds. Seeing that ye have put off, put off, stop the old man with his deeds. What is that? Now we are putting off the deeds, the work of the old man. Though, I'm always telling you that we are not perfect and we, we are weak, but that is what the word of God. Now, we are putting off that old man in us. We always say when we do something that is not according to the will of God, we say, nagmumulto tayo. Which is sometimes nangyayari sa buhay po natin. But the word of God says, we need to put off. You know, we can never reach the sinless perfection. But God is expecting us to do His will in our life. We will say, I cannot do it. Yes, we cannot do it if you live by your own. If we will not live according to the word of God, there will be no chance to put up the old man. We can never put that old man in us. We can never stop that old man. If we will not allow the word of God, the word of God to penetrate in our lives. If we are really a true believer. And if you are a true and really a, a really believer of the Lord, there will be change. And that man will be put to off in our life. In verse 8, it says here, Brother John, the same chapter, verse 8. Uh, Colossians 3, 3, 8, 3, 8. It says, But now we also put off all this. Ito yung pinakput off. Sabi niya, Put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Simple as that. When we put off the old man. Simple as that. No need for interpretation. We don't interpret by our own. The word of God can interpret itself. And it says here, when we put off uh, the old man, we are putting off all of these things, although we sometimes fell in our life. So here, we need to put off that old man. It will be more difficult for us to put off the things in our life, if we are going to keep on living for ourselves, the Bible says, it is no longer I, but Christ liveth in me. Are you preachers? Are you pastors and preachers? Are you doing that? We all fell. We all have weakness. But you know what? There is a big difference between you are not doing anything and striving all for the Lord. Are we striving if I am going to ask you now, is there a desire? Is there a, a burning desire now? Is there now a, 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 a need in your heart now? Is there a want in your heart now that you want to serve God? And there is, there maybe the old man is not yet off. Maybe you need Christ. 
In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, If any man, anyone who will go to Christ will become a new creature, there is no exemption. If you go to Christ, you will become a new creature. Maybe the reason why there is no putting off of the old man, because you are not yet in Christ. And as for us as a believer, let me say this. Kapatid, kung yung laging sasabihin, mahina ako. The reason lang ng mahina ka kasi pinapahina mo sarili mo. We have the word of God. We can trust the word of God. Preachers fell. Preachers, we have the weakness. Sometimes even, sometimes even in our basketball. But you know what? If we have Christ, there is a putting off of the old man. It should be put off. That's what the word of God says. The problem is that why, why I cannot observe yourself. You examine yourself. The Bible said, you examine yourself. Why? No one behind this pulpit stand and saying they are strong. No, we are not. I am even trembling while preaching this because I know even me, I am one of those people that are being taught by the word of God. But kapatid, maybe for when it comes to difference, that is that desire in my heart. If you don't have, have one. Have the desire on the word of God, to God, love God. Have you ever fell in love with the Lord? My question, have you ever fell in love with the Lord? Sabi natin, do we need to do that? Yes, we need to do that. Everything that we do, all, it should be out of love. And my question is this, do we have the desire to fall in love with that man who died on the cross for us, who changed our life? That's why now we are being unfair. He already gave himself. He said, okay, here am I now. I already, I already died for you. Now, put that man off. Let it go and let God. We are all weak, you know that. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Word of God, we can do this. Because something that we need to know and something that we need to realize, sometimes we spend our time in social media, we spend our life talking to our friends, and sometimes they are not being an encouragement to us, and we even neglect the Word of God. And how can we put that man off? No one can do that except for the Lord. It is only Christ. That's why if anyone be in Christ, if you are in Christ, you can put that man off. Amen. Amen. My point number three. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. If we put off, we should put it on. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in, in righteousness and through holiness. You notice the verse. Okay, if we put that man off, now we should put that on, put on the new man. What is the new man? New man. The man in Christ. The, one, the man that is being now a new creature which God is created, God created in us, his, gave us this righteousness, and notice the last praises, and true holiness. Why, why do they have to put the true holiness here, the, the word true, when there is already a word, the word holiness? Because a lot of people think they are holy, but they are not, because there is no Christ in them. And they and they never put on Christ in them. There is no Christ in them. That's why there is no righteousness. There is no, there is no true holiness in them. They did not put Christ on them. They did not put off. That's why they cannot put on Christ in their life. It is impossible. But as we can see here, the word of God commanded us to put on that new man in us. The new man is created in righteousness 
and through holiness. That's who we are. Do you know that? Let me give you this. Do you know that the power of God that did in our life is more powerful, more powerful than He created the heaven and the earth? Oh, why? How? When God created the heaven and the earth, He spoke, let there be light, and there was light, right? But here, for our life now, for that light to shine in us, God had to do something. Look at this. When he created the heavens and the earth, he just spoke. He just spoke. But when he wants that light, that light Christ in us, he, when God wants Christ to shine in us, he must do something. What must he do? He must give his son to die on the cross just for us to have a new life. Is that not more powerful? Imagine God. He did something and he gave his life. He gave his only begotten son just for us to have a new life. Just for us to have or to become a new creature. That's what God did in our life. That's why we are so unfair to God. He gave his life. He gave his life to us. And sometimes we are going to say, no, this is who I am. No, you are not. You are being deceived. People say, ito hindi lang po dito to. Madami na ako narinig. And they are saying, you know what? This is who I am. This is how I am going to live. No, you are being deceived. The word of God, the word of God will change you. No matter what. He, have, you, have you noticed the life of Paul? And what did Paul says? What did Paul says? I am the chief, I am the chief of the sinners. How much sin did you do in your life? How much did how many sins did you do compared to Paul? Paul is killing the believers. Paul is persecuting persecuting the those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is thinking that Christ is a false prophet. And what God did in his life, he changed the life of Paul. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Romans 12, 2. Okay, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order for us to have that, we should not conform to the world, but having a transformed mind, having the mind of Christ in us. That's a problem. The reason why we cannot overcome what's in our mind, what's on, on our head, or in our head, is what we think that we can benefit, something that we like, something that we love, and something that will not hurt us. But you can never be transformed until you have a renewed mind, until we have the mind of Christ. That the word of God says. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, and, and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. A renewed knowledge. But it Ano nang pananaw mo sa Diyos ngayon, sa buhay mo? What do you think of God in your life? Do you think we are, oh now I am very, very proud and I am so happy because God saved me. Do you think when you face God, you will not tremble? When I say, when, uh, who's that? Uh, Uzziah ba yun? Yung kay uh, Isaiah chapter 6 verse, chapter 6, when King Uzziah ba yun? Yung namatay? And, and, and Isaiah saw the throne of God. What did he say? I am a man 
with an unclean, lip, uh, unclean lips. And I am undone. Do you think when we see, we see God, we can still stand like this? No. We will tremble before God. Manginginig ang lahat ng dapat manginig when you see God. When we meet Him face to face, that's what will happen to us. What do we know about Him? Do we know about Him that He is only a loving God? Look at this. If God the Father was able to crush His Son because of sin in Him, imagine what God can do to those people who don't have Christ. And even us, what God will do to us. I'm not saying He will punish us to bring us into hell. No, what I'm trying to say is this. Do you think God will not correct you? God will correct us. If you are really a child of God. If not, don't, don't expect it. Not, not even a single one of correction in your life if you don't have Christ in you. Don't expect Christ to, 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 to correct you. It says in, in Hebrews, maybe you are a bastard. You are not yet, you are not really a child of God. That's why there is no correction in you. So what do we know? Well, what is our knowledge about God? Having the full knowledge of God, we should have the, the, the full knowledge of God in our life because we, we have the Bible. That's why it is impossible, my brother and my sisters, not to have a changed life. Anyone who, anyone who stands behind this pulpit, we are standing by the grace and by the mercy of God. There is nothing in us that we can say, I can stand and preach the gospel. No, there is nothing in us. Nothing, not at all. Because Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it is not us anymore. The you and the me is already dead. It's only Christ. It's only Christ. No more, no less. My last point, but I'm not yet finished. Okay. In Romans chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Romans 6, uh, 6, 6, verse Six six. He says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Keep on repeating that we already crucified in him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. If you already, okay, okay, okay. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, please go back to verse 6, Brother John. It says here that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Serve sin means living in sin. And we can never do that until that body is destroyed on the cross. Not here. On the cross. It should be destroyed there. It should be destroyed and died with Christ 2,000 years ago. And in verse 7, Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Di ba yung mga nagkakasala? Di ba those who people who already died, they, can, they cannot sin anymore? We are already dead in the sight of God. Do you know that? We are already dead in the sight of God. The reason why we are being righteous, the reason why we are being holy, because God the Father seeing His Son Jesus Christ in us. But if God the Father will see us, He will throw us in hell. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you will go to Isaiah 53 verse 10, if I'm not mistaken, and God was pleased to destroy or to crush His Son because of your sin and because of my sin, putting in Him, but clothing us with His righteousness. So if we died, we are already free from sin. Though we commit mistakes, though we commit sin. That's what the word of God says. Or else, if we are not yet free from sin, we will not go to heaven and we will go direct to hell. That's the word of God. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. He says, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, 
arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that, suffer, for, uh, that hath suffered the flesh hath ceased from sin. We can never, the truth is that we can never stop from sinning because we are still in the flesh. But the word of God says, those who already did, for he that hath suffered, yung died, the flesh hath ceased from the sin. Minsan masyado lang po tayong ano eh. Sometimes you want to water down the water down the word of God and we want to use our weakness to be our passes or yung pa, ano ba yun? Yung passes natin para makalusot sa Diyos. No, you can never. You can never do that. Gumagawa tayo ng passes. We are making our own badge. Yung badge ba? Before when we have the PNP uh, moral, recovery, moral recovery program Police can never catch, or they can never tell you are doing a, a violation. I will give me your license. No, I will show them my bots. I am in, in MRND, in PNP, uh, Moral Recovery Program. But in our life, without Christ, we can never. Without Christ, we can never stop. We can never stop in sinning. There are two different things. Continuing in sin, it means we still commit mistakes or living in sin. Those who live in sin, they are not saved. They are unsaved. They are unbelievers. But for us uh, as a Christian, we still commit mistakes. We know that. We know that. So I hope it is clear for us. It says for for you, for uh, anyone if, if anyone be in Christ is a new creature the old thing have passed away. Now I be let me go back to verse five seventeen of first Corinth, second Corinthians. It says here therefore if any man be in Christ he a new creature. What is that new creature? Have you have an idea? The new creature because we are not smoking anymore, because we are not drinking anymore. Because we are not like this anymore. Is that the new creature? That is the effect of a new creature. But that is not the new creature. What is the new creature? New creature means a life in Christ. That is the new creature. The man who died for the Lord. The man living now for Christ. And because of that, we are now a new creature. Because now we are now in Christ. There is now an effect. God changed his life. God changed our lives. That is the result of being in Christ. That is the result of being a new creature. See? That is a new creature. A new creature means we are our life in Christ or else he is not new if you are not in Christ. You are not new creature if you are not in Christ. Don't expect, don't imagine, don't dream that you are a new creature if you are not in Christ. Never, never, because you will just end up in hell. Don't expect, don't assume that you are in Christ. Make sure you are in Christ and you will become a new creature. In a new creature, there will be an effect in our life. That is our testimony. That will be the result in our life. And I hope it will be clear in us. And it says here, all things are passed away. What are those? Thi- what are that things that passed away? First thing that passed away is the old man. The old man passed away. So if the old man already passed away, there will be no same thing that being done by that old man. Because the old man passed away. That is what the Bible says. The old thing passed away. We are no longer the same anymore. We are now in the Lord. And it says here, behold, this is what Preacher John says, behold, behold, look, look, look. Look, there is now a new creature. Okay, let me read it first. All things are passed away. Behold, behold, see, look. All things are become new. If you are going to study 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, going down, what will be the new, what will be the new, the new things here? Is that because now, we are not smoking, yes, it is, because now we are not drinking, because now we are not, now we are not uh, 
saying bad words, yes, that is the effect of being in the Lord. That's the effect of being a new creature. But what is the new creature? If you are going to look at it, you study the word of God, what is the new creature? If you are going to look at it, it says here, all things in verse 18, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled to, to us himself by Jesus Christ. God, he reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at this. If you are going to study it and you can are going to look at it now, because now we are a new creature, this new thing come to us. We are now bringing the ministry, we are now, they have the ministry of reconciliation. What does it mean? We are now bringing the word of God. You go to verse 20, it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. What does an ambassador do? He represents Christ to the world. Before we are the enemy of God, now we are the messenger of God. Because we are now in Christ. That is the new man in us. Before we are the enemy of God. In, in, in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, uh, I forgot, uh, in God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Before, that's who we are. We are the enemy of God, but now we are now the ambassadors of Christ. We are now bringing the word of God to the world. We are now sharing the word to them. When we go to the world, we bring the word of God. We are now the messenger of God. See the difference be be between before and now? Before we are the enemy of God, but now we are, we are the ambassador. We are the messenger of God. We are the one bringing Christ to the nation. We are now being Christ. We are now being the one bringing the word of God to them. Amen? Amen. That's who we are. That's who we are. And let me close in verse 21. It says in verse 21, For he that made him to be sin for us, that is Christ, he became sin for us, who knew no sin, you don't have sin, not even a single one, that we might be, that we might be made righteousness, the righteousness of God in him. See? This is who we are now. God the Father is seeing us righteous because of Christ. So it is impossible for us not to have a changed life if we don't have Christ. But if because now we have Christ in our life, Father God seeing us a holy person, a righteous person because of Christ in us. That's what he see, what his son did on the cross. Well, I hope this one encourages you, and I hope and I pray that it will continue to keep us on, keep on Keep on keeping on for the Lord. We are not perfect, mga kapatid. We are not perfect. We, we are all weak. We all need the strength of God. But there is already a promise from the Word of God that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things come. Amen. Let's pray.